When a severe spinal cord injury renders a dog unable to move its legs or feel its toes, sadly, about 10 to 15% of dogs will go on to develop a devastating condition called myelomalacia, whether successfully treated for the initial problem or not. Myelomalacia in dogs is an unfortunate potential outcome of severe spinal cord injury. This fatal condition manifests as a rapid and progressive necrosis, or death, of the spinal cord. The spinal cord is a long band of nerve tissue fed by a system of blood vessels. Trauma to the spinal cord can cause direct injury to the nervous tissue as well as injuries to the blood vessels supplying it. When the spinal cord is compressed and blood flow to the spinal cord is interrupted, nerve tissue dies, causing the spinal cord to soften. Myomalacia translates to spinal cord softening. Softening of the spinal cord starts around the site of the injury and then progresses, moving along the entire length of the spine. Myelomalacia causes permanent paralysis in dogs and proves fatal once it reaches the part of the spinal cord that supplies the nerves to the diaphragm, which controls breathing. Myelomalacia in dogs is not fully understood, but it is related to spinal cord trauma, usually in the form of acute grade five intervertebral disc disease. The spinal cord is protected by the vertebral column. The vertebral column is composed of small bones called vertebrae that are connected by intervertebral discs. Intervertebral discs allow the spine to bend and work as shock absorbers. They are made up of an outer fibrous ring and an inner gelatinous gel-like filling. Intervertebral disc disease occurs when an intervertebral disc's gel-like filling hardens and ruptures through the outer fibrous ring, compressing the spinal cord and affecting a dog's ability to walk. This is commonly referred to as a slipped, ruptured, or herniated disc. Neurological symptoms caused by compression of the spinal cord are graded on a scale of one to five. In grade five, a dog is unable to move or feel its legs. A dog in this condition has about a 10 to 15% chance of developing myelomalacia anytime within a week of the initial injury, regardless of treatment. Sadly, this chance increases to 25 to 30% in French Bulldogs, which is one of the breeds most prone to intervertebral disc disease. Myelomalacia in dogs is characterized by a progressive descending and ascending spinal cord softening following an acute spinal cord injury. A chain reaction of sorts first begins to affect the healthy spinal cord behind the injury closer to the back legs and tail. Then later in the progression of the disease, it moves forward along the spine towards the front legs. Eventually, myelomalacia will reach the nerves that supply the diaphragm. Signs of myelomalacia include increasing discomfort or spinal pain, loss of muscle tone and reflexes in the hind limbs, a dilated anus, hyperthermia, which is higher than normal body temperature, weakness or paralysis of the thoracic or front limbs, and increased respiratory effort or respiratory distress due to paralysis of those respiratory muscles. Once a dog loses the ability to bear weight on its front limbs, it can lose the ability to breathe within a few days or possibly even hours. So it is at this point that we will recommend euthanasia as the most humane thing to do. The truth is, is that MRI can suggest myelomalacia in dogs, but is only correct in identifying it in some cases. Myelomalacia is a concern for any dog with grade five spinal cord injury. Even with the most appropriate and aggressive medical and surgical treatments, again, 10 to 15% of dogs will go on to develop myelomalacia within a week after the spinal cord trauma. The fact that this condition cannot be accurately predicted is frustrating to say the least. In order to provide a grade five patient with the best chance of walking again after a compressive spinal cord injury, such as a ruptured disc, surgery must be performed right away. However, there is always a chance that myelomalacia will develop over the next few days and humane euthanasia will be recommended for the patient anyway. On the other hand, if we were to wait a week to see whether or not myelomalacia will occur, we would lose the time advantage that is critical to successful surgical treatment of the much larger percentage of dogs that will not develop myelomalacia. Unfortunately, there is no way to predict, prevent, or treat myelomalacia in dogs at this time. It is possible that myelomalacia can start and then stop, but frankly, the most realistic scenario is that it will not stop until the pet parents are ultimately faced with the decision to humanely euthanize their beloved dog. 
In rare cases, myelomalacia does not progress significantly after it starts, but these patients remain permanently paralyzed. Myelomalacia in dogs may not be predictable, preventable, or treatable, but early diagnosis and treatment of spinal cord problems always provide patients with the best possible chance of recovery.